next thing we're going to talk about are blazers. So we talked about, when we talk about active galaxies, the active galactic nuclei. So we have a galaxy such as a Seaford galaxy. And then we talked about uh, uh, galaxies such as uh, radio galaxies. So the next thing is a blazer. Blazers weren't really originally thought of as galaxies, though. First one was actually an object that looked like a star. And so it was like many, many other stars, you know, just a dot in the sky, uh, discovered in 1929, um, a dot in, in, in the constellation Lacerda, which is kind of a northern constellation, and uh, it was observed to vary in brightness. Uh, so it varied in brightness uh, a ways. Uh, you know, it's normally a pretty dim star. Uh, um, you know, magnitude, uh, you know, magnitude uh, 15, 16 or so at normal. And so um, it's, it's uh, uh, something a little brighter, something a little dimmer. But it's, it was one of these things that uh, they thought of as just a dim variable star. Um, so they called it BL Lacerda. You remember that's, that's one of the ways named variable stars. It's RST and then RRRS all the way down to ZZ and then it's a, 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 B, and then finally B, 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 C. So this is B, L, Lacerda. So it's pretty far down the list in terms of discoveries. Um, well, at first it was a variable, they thought of a variable star, and, and so you look at the light curve to find out what kind of variable star it is. Well, it did not seem to vary like a pulsating variable. It was obviously not a supernova or anything like that. So it was like, well, what the heck is this thing? Because it didn't seem to make any sense whatsoever as to what this variable star was. And so uh, they watched it and watched it and watched it and couldn't really figure it out. It wasn't really uh, uh, until 1968 that astronomers also discovered it's giving off some radio waves. Uh, um, and so, um, so it was discovered in 1929 and then it just was thought to be some weird variable star. In 1968, it discovered radio waves. And it's like, oh, wow, okay, that's like downright weird. Uh, uh, so a radio star of some sort, maybe. So they, they, they studied it with uh, uh, the, uh, some of the biggest telescopes at the time, such as the Hale Telescope at Mount Palomar. And that's when they discovered, wait, it's not a star. What we're looking at is the center of a galaxy. So this is the core of a galaxy that we're looking at. A galaxy that had a huge redshift, it was 280 million parsecs away. That is almost a billion light years away, 0.9 billion light years. And that, that was measured in 1970. And so the question is, well, gosh, what's going on here? In fact, this, the core of this galaxy is brighter than anything else because the core was mainly what we were so it's just blazing away, and so that they, they, they realized this was something weird, but then they started discovering a couple of other objects were also equally bright and shining away at the core. So they came up with the term blazer to describe the cores of these super bright galaxies. So the question is, what's going on here? Well, the core tended to be very star-like, very tiny little thing compared to the size of the galaxy, and um, it varied. It got brighter and dimmer, indicating that it wasn't very big. Uh, the size of something is related to how quickly it varies. And so this was something that was pretty small. Uh, so whatever was varying was no more than a few light weeks across, but to be that bright, the Eddington limit said you had to have millions and millions, tens of millions of solar masses. Well, very small, very high mass. Once again, this sounds like a supermassive black hole that's accreting stuff. And so we have, once again, an idea of a supermassive black hole at the center of a galaxy causing all kinds of activity, and that gives us a blazer.